And hello and welcome everyone to our little tabletop where we talk about the geopolitical ramifications of... No, nah, no, nah, we're just playing D&D. &D. <laughs> uh, let's make sure, well, let me fix this camera because uh, Josh is kind of uh, in the corner there. We're not putting Josh in the corner. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little short on players today. Uh, we had one, well, two of our players of our normal four have had real life issues pop up. And let me make sure. Uh, okay, can someone say something? I just want to make sure our volumes are good. Oh, Lark, one lost us. Okay, I see you coming out there. Um, and thank you for the follow, uh, Hoss00312. I appreciate that. Um, and love my DD streams go to the world geopolitical issues yes detective pancakes yes um i will if crystal is not too busy if she does have a stream there if she could keep me apprised of the comments because i'm going to be trying to wax the narrative or damien if you can because you can multitask like nobody i'm in like co the corner on mine oh, i see you right there you're good your mic not working or? no i'm 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 scooching <laughs> so uh we had two of our players who had some issues uh and real life happens you know it just happens so we're gonna move the narrative along um and we might have an additional player because uh, i do like having a larger party because it gives me more targets <laughs> so let's get on with our introductions first first and definitely not least Let's go with uh, Miyagi. Alrighty, hi, I'm Josh, Wizard Cat Dragon. I play Miyagi, the Draconic Sorcerer Lineage uh, Divination Wizard. Um, so, a literal Wizard Cat Dragon. I'm never going to get tired of saying that. Never. Never. But, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> and <laughs> next we have Damien, the DM, who is also my DM. Oh, thank you, Autistic Gamer Sean, for the subscription. I did get that alert there. Got a little Sean. note there. And we miss you, Sean. Get a job, so you, different job, so you can come back, please. <laughs> please. Um, free love, free level and one magic item. Just saying. <laughs> but we have Damien, the DM, who also, if you might not have known is a streamer and is a dm on a game that i play in you get to see me not be so crazy in their game anymore but <laughs> y'all yeah. are coming up to a super exciting part in that game by the way very cool. I, i've been talking to crystal about it all day <laughs> but hi i'm damien the dm i am totally not at all obsessed with D, &D. it's not like i put it like in my username and everything and you know Full Fay right here, but yeah, I'm playing Alexa Nurikara, the white dragonborn ranger who's super naive and has been getting her ass handed to her by undead in this temple and just really wants to fucking leave as soon as we get to save her friend. Oh, I thought that this was going to be your next uh, vacation home. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Night's Fall. Uh, I have been playing D&D since 2nd edition. However, I did skip 4th edition, but from what I heard, I didn't miss much. Um, and I play on Damien the DM's stream. I run a couple other games. Uh, I've been running... The reason why this game is only every other Sunday on stream is because I've also been running a game on the other Sundays uh, since before the pandemic. And, well, I'm not going to leave those guys out hanging without a DM. Uh, they are in an interesting spot, too. They uh, are cleaning up their mistakes. So, um, yes, the pointy ears. Damien goes all out. Man, I just had my door open for some reason. Hey, we're not playing it's Phasmophobia. Ghost. It's Ghost! No, no <laughs> Phasmophobia today. That's Friday on Damien's stream. So, if you guys don't follow Damien the DM, I highly suggest you do so. So, a recap of where we've left off. This is a complete homebrew world that I've created and is still evolving and will probably go through many other iterations. However, the excuse me, the actions of the party will actually I'm going to make sure that they take effect into the world. 
They are going to be part of history. So no pressure whatsoever. Uh, our adventurers, having le uh, le left the Grand Duchy of Brendan and contracted on this quote-unquote ship, may or may not be a pirate ship, we don't know, called the Sapphire Cathedral, they ended up finding that the captain, unbeknownst, well, not like many people in the Grand Duchy, many of the humans who look down on some of the other races, this captain w was having none of that and he'd been kicked off some nobles off her ship for even suggesting that they had they get better quarters. Uh, the ship is filled with many different races, many different uh, types of people, and they're all pretty friendly. In fact, uh, Ath, our absent barbarian, had a chance to meet some of the friendly uh, crewmates who may or may not have killed the first mate. We don't know yet. <laughs> that was an NPC that was played by our wizard cat dragon. Uh, anyway, the party went down into these ruins in the middle of this jungle. Uh, these ruins have are covered with dust. Uh, they were searching for evidence of a long-lost civilization uh, called a republic. They don't even know the full name of it yet. Uh, upon Before going into these ruins, they managed to scrounge and repair a warforged who throughout this entire dungeon-type area they were able to repair, and they learned this Warforged's name was Sheena. Uh, and Sheena and Hondir, the Minotaur cleric, have been talking a lot recently uh, in hushed tones. Elkson, our white dragonborn, I had to take a pause there, <laughs> happened to free two demons down here. I'm sure that is perfectly fine. But went from... I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here too. Oh, there's a green lady here, the tree lady who's been trapped here, running down to try to rescue this tree lady. And I think that's where we're going to pick it, pick our story up. So you guys have recently cleared an area where these zombies that were infested with these disgusting green worms. So much that when you they attacked you, these worms tried to burrow themselves into you. They were utterly dispatched, but you guys are hurting. So Zen, who happened to say, next time someone opens up a door, make sure that everybody is aware that you're opening up this door. have just finished combat you know that the only path that is left to you is to the north let's go ahead and show this what? i like the transition uh, thank you i like it too let's go ahead and put a little music on too Actually, let's go to so that, or I'm sorry, Elkson, Miyagi, what are you doing? Thank you for the follow, Fuzzy God. Am I? What hit points am I supposed to be at? Uh, you that... are actually uninjured right now. Okay, cool. I'm um, nearly dead. <laughs> I need yeah, let me fix that. I must to make sure that for some reason you keep on getting um, encumbered. I'm gonna have to figure that out. So maybe it's the emotional baggage that Oxen carries after releasing, you know, demons hey. and devils. Or... <laughs> I'm sorry. Do a. Second level healing word on Miyagi. All right, what do you say? Um, <laughs> gotta get into character. Gotta get into character. 
Stay strong, kitty boy. We still got a ways to go. And that is going to be nice. Seven health. I uh, love that it says damage in D&D Beyond. <laughs> seven health. That's better than nothing. I'm back at double digits. I mean, I, I could keep going, but I only have a certain number of spell slots. Duh. I don't know if I have a can yeah, I don't have a cantrip prepared that can heal. No. Hondir will come up. And will Is he there? He is there. Okay. We'll I didn't see his little token, so I didn't know if he was there or if he had left yet. Nope, not yet. He is going to Let's see if I can figure out how to do this on this HUD. Right, I'll figure that out later. He is going to actually cast Cure Wounds. Oh, that's cool. Sorry, I just want to test it. I just wanted to, I just wanted to test out the new HUD. That's all. Let's see. He's going to cast it at second level because that's all he has left. And you'll get 16 healing back, Miyagi. Ooh! Ooh, 16! 23 total. Come now. Yeah! Come now, Miyagi. We still have ways to go. We must find this tree lady of oxen's. Then we can be done with this place. You see, he's oh. licking his lips a little bit. The taste of copper is in the air. You can definitely see there's old dried blood everywhere. Must and mold smell is invading your uh, your nostrils. This, You guys are done with this place. Do perhaps we want to look behind these doors? I mean, there could be something or someone. And Miyagi's going to look over to Elks and someone behind them. Should. I don't know exactly where she's supposed to be. You can certainly go down there. There are three doors. And these doors actually have what looks like a small, maybe foot-by-foot -foot window with bars in them at the top where you can actually look and see what's inside. Oh, the game is paused. That's why I can't. The game is paused, yeah. The game is unpaused. Woo! I'll go to this one. Yeah, yeah. Can I check for traps? <laughs> sure, roll an investigation. Uh, investigation is not great. Definitely not great. That's a five. You are certain that there's no trip wires, there's no pressure plates, there's no little. I open the door. <laughs> You open the door, go and click the door, and see what happens. It is filled with more corpses and what looks like dead worms. Gosh. This place is sad and depressing, and I hate it here. Roll perception check for me. Perception... It's not much better. 19. All right. As you looked over to Miyagi to said that, and you look back, you swear one of those worms is closer to you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Next door. <laughs> okay. Check for chat. Roll it. Miyagi's going to... Look over to Susan. Sixteen. I'm opening okay. this door, and Miyagi's going to open this door. Okay. Miyagi, in this door, you see a few clear vases filled with something that is moving and yellowish green in color. Oxen, it doesn't look like there's any traps on that door at all. I can 
completely empty room. I d don't know about you, but I found some moving things and some jaws and stuff over here. Yeah, to... there's worms in the far door. Let's just, how we just go and leave these doors shut. Can I roll a perception check to see if there's anything else in that room or just the moving jars? Sure, the you things... can do a quick perception check. Seven. There might, there might be something inside the jars. Obviously, if they were going to put something in, you know, in anything, it would probably be in the jar of what looks like green worms. It's worms. It's worms. I'm. Um, I'm going to close the door. <laughs> I would like you all to, if you are taking a look at the stream, I'm going to show you. The oh, where are you at here? Here it is. This is the green worms and the zombies that you are f facing. Just for visual. Oh dear. Visual tool. Oh dear. So yes, that's what the same color of uh, stuff is in that pot. <laughs> Wiggle buddies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Chat makes Wiggle sure. buddies. Very nice. Oh, and thank you, um, thank you, Aquatar, uh, for the subscription for three months. I do appreciate. That's one of my other players for my other game. And I think we lost a Josh because he is frozen. He'll be back. Technical soon. difficulties. That's Please what streaming hold. is. <laughs> yep. So, you would like to continue on, Elkson? Oh, yeah, that's not. Sorry, that's I not... froze for a second. You're good. Well, let's not touch the creepy zombie worms. I don't want to. Okay, let's keep going then. All right, you guys, again, as you remember, you entered into this room from the right as you were walking forward. You have already searched this room. You have found those books there. You have a door to the right, and you have what looks like a solid, massive door straight ahead my, you... my board is bugging out and I cannot move Elkson it's just it, it's stuck on the ruler or... it, it might be because I still have control of Elkson like when I pull up my like PCs it still says I have Elkson right there uh, just make sure you are on the token controls on the left hand side and the the select tokens. Um, but it's it's okay. I'm just gonna refresh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there. <laughs> so I saw some twang showed up. That's what happened. So you have a door to your right that looks to be a, a simple wooden door. Uh, it's a little bit rotted, uh, as in most of the wood that's in this place. And up ahead, you have a, a cart that is pushed up against a solid steel door. Do we want to try and move the cart? Do we want to look at the door to our right? What, what would you all like to do? So then will say, and I cannot do the accent, Joey, I'm sorry. I just want to be done with this place. This place has already cost me more platinum than anything else. As she looks over to Sheena. Hondir's like, 
Well, if there was anything worth protecting, it would probably be behind that door. Why don't we check the big one? Sheena will be like, that sounds good. I can move the wagon if you like. Or the table, whatever it is. Probably, that would probably be for the best. Yeah, I don't feel like opening up any more doors. On my end, at least. Sheena will go there and pushes the wagon out of the way. And then goes for the door and opens it. You okay there, Alexon? Oh, no, that was me. I, I just wanted to see if I could move Alexon. Oh, no, I was just seeing Damien's face. Oh. Oh, it started doing the thing again where I could only measure distances and I couldn't move Alexon. Can you, can you move Alexon now? I'm refreshing again. Okay. Well, again, we're not going to need Foundry for much more, so. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's about to kill off her characters. Yep. Maybe. So. In fact, honestly, we don't need Foundry right now. So. Yeah, forget it. I can't move her. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. So, Sheena will open up this door. Elkson, for the first moment, you actually smell fresh air coming from that room. What's with that look on right your face? Don't, you, you don't smell that? Should, should I do a perception check? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can get a oh. little taste of fresh air. Uh, Elkson is, gonna, is more in tune with nature. All I smell is copper. Blood. It's fresh air. Fresh air means plants. Oh, your tree friend. Oh, yes. Um, I'm, I'm going that way already. Okay. Are you running in? Are you just walking in? Are you? Suffering? I'm walking in. I'm, I'm not reckless enough anymore to run, but I'm walking in. Okay, you walk in. As you walk in, you see a very dark room and you see movement in the back corner the light from the that is coming from the room that's just giving you a bit of shadow in here you see the hint of green skin as this figure is trembling and trying to get as far as away from you as possible It, do I recognize the figure? It looks like a uh, female humanoid that is all green, but to recognize that, to get anything more than that, you would have to approach more. Hands out, actively, like, not on weapons, like, looking as, like, unintimidating as possible. Very slowly approach. No, stay away! No! Do I recognize the voice? You do not. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm it's trying to find my friend. It's a trick. And a trick. Meowgi head into the room? Sure. Because I, it just as a player, I don't know who's all head into, headed into the room or who's already in there. It's so a very I don't... small room, so it's only going to be able to fit two of you. Okay. I have come down here. We're just, we're trying to find one of my friends that's trapped in here somewhere. You see, as they were holding their hands to shield themselves from you, just a peek of an eye. This is definitely a dryad. Um, but you see areas where their skin is uh, green and lush is actually decaying and almost looks like the tree is rotted um you see w wounds on them and as soon as they look up to you and they catch your eye they they go back no it's a trick no 
It's not, I promise. No. No. Will you let me heal you? And at this point, she'll, like, kneel down. Like, she's not getting any closer. She's just kneeling. Uh, at this point, would you say Miyagi has walked in the room? Absolutely. Is everything okay, Oxen? There is a dryad in here, and she's really hurt and frightened. Stay away from me. Stay away. You're not the first dryad I've met. I'm friends with one. You're just you're a trick. As she tries to reach out. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Nat 20. You are not charmed. Alexan is still going to stay kneeling, like, hands up. I'm not trying to trick you. Maybe you know her. DM question. What was her name again? Um... I'd have to look. I lost notes. my thing where I wrote it down. <laughs> I, I'd have to make up notes, um, but I will give you an insight check real quick. Okay. We aren't trying to hurt you. Um, would yeah. I have seen a spell being cast? No. Okay. Inside, Elkson. Sixteen. You've seen, you haven't seen a whole lot of trauma in your life. You really haven't. But you've seen the effects of trauma before. Yeah, my mom. Yeah. Words are probably not going to work. I... Let me know if I need to do a nature check, but can I druid craft whatever blossom would come off of this kind of tree? Like the kind that she like is clearly. Well, I'd say you you trek through the uh, jungle here. You could you could imagine a, a flower from that you've seen there. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll druid craft a flower and just gently like okay. toss it over to her. I need you to make a per persuasion check with advantage. Is, okay. is she, like, just for point of clarification, is she, like, chained up or, like, restrained in any way? Or is she just huddling in a corner, like, scared out of her mind? Huddling in a corner, scared out of her mind. That was a 13 and a 14. You see she her eyes open up. As you see all her muscles that were tensed relax. As you're casting to as you are doing your druid craft, it's over. I'm not here to trick you, please. And you see, she's cradling this flower. I, I believe you. As tears are just free flowing down, as she rushes up. And attempts to embrace you. Allow it while I cast healing words on her. As you're holding on to her, you... You are very, very made, very aware. She's emaciated. You're, you're not a very strong person, but you think if you squeezed, it would cause her serious damage. As she is just flat out crying right now. She's heal allowed... her. Go ahead. I'll heal her for six as I like kind of very, very gently like kind of soothe her back and be like, we're here. We can help you get out of here. We have someone who's a little bit better at healing with us. We can get you into better shape. I haven't... I haven't seen the sun in decades. It's Here. just as pretty. 
hearing that, can Miyagi, like, rifle through his bag and try and find some rations to hand this person? Because in his head, it's like, they probably haven't eaten. They're probably starving. Mm -hmm. Let's at least give them something. Alex, and you do see this, and you know that rations, dryads aren't going to eat the rations. They need their tree. We need to get her back to nature, not food. We have to get her back to her tree. Uh, like any tree, or like her... Specific one. It, it, all dryads are connected to very specific trees. Oh. Are we still on the oh. island? An island? You are on an island. We, we are on. Yes. My, my tree's out outside the ruins. Okay. She tries we were... to collect herself a little bit. Go ahead, you were saying. We were uh, lo looking for the dryad that we heard was here. And I suppose that is you. So we can take you out of the ruins now. He hasn't been here for a while, but he's been on trips before. Who? Who? Alundan. He rules this area. The lich here. History check? Sure. On the name or the fact that it's a lich? Because I doubt Miyagi has On the name. Any name? Gotcha. I have no idea what that means. You have never heard That's that. a 13. I've never heard that name before. Um, okay. No one's here right now. Not that we've seen. Yes. So it's the perfect time to get you out of here. We'll get you healed here. up. We'll get you to your tree. And then you can tell us what you know about him. Let's get out of here first. Yes. And you see that she's still gripping the flower. And the dead areas of her are starting to turn green. As you see another emotion in her eyes, instead of despair and trauma, you see determination and rage. Go. Let's let's go. And what do y'all do? I'll, I'll keep an arm around her just because she seemed so weak until she decides to step away, but start escorting her out, and as unless someone objects, start heading back to the entrance. Okay. Um, she will not object. She definitely help, would appreciate the help. But she does ask, could you make any anything else? I'm very, very weak. Absolutely. Is there something you'd like? Vines with purple flowers. She'll druid craft it up and hand it to her. As you see, she's starting to limp a little bit less. Mm -hmm. I can almost feel the roots again. As you start to hear, <laughs> there's the roots. <laughs> I won't be his plaything anymore. Do you perhaps know a way out of here besides going to the front entrance? Sorry, say that again, Miyagi. Oh, I was just asking if the Dryad knew of a way out besides trekking all the way back through the front entrance. Like, if there was a shortcut or something. I do not. <laughs> we haven't I... even asked you your name yet. My name. My name. I'm Alexin. She seems a little distraught for a moment. Over 
As we don't hear any more of the stomping or the collapsing of tunnels, as she is definitely thinking a while, I, I don't, it's been so long since I've ever even heard her. If you can't remember your old one, we could always give you a new one. A Lorna? A Lorna. It's pretty. I think you hope so. So then, I would well, like to collapse this place. But I don't have the strength for it. We. Get out of here before you collapse it. Yes, yes. You guys trek back, backtracking the road. You go through the teleportation circle, back to the first level. There's an eerie calm and quiet. Yes? Sorry, kids. <laughs> There's an eerie calm and quiet in the air. And, but there's no movement. There's no sounds of zombie limbs waving over you. You better believe that Axon is going to be on full lookout after all yeah. that she dealt with. Yeah. You pass by the thin... Uh, layer of dead skin that wrapped around you before. Bit on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you swear it moves a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys exit. The sun is shining outside. Lorna closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Another. It's still pretty. Yes. You see that most of her wounds are gone now. She's less emaciated as before. And a little smile comes to the corner of her mouth. Thank you so much. As you just hear collapsing and almost like a muffled explosion. That's better. Elkson, please, will you and your friends die with me at my tree? If you would have us. My saviors, I would... I would be... ill-advised to not thank you properly. Inside check. Roll it. Alexon isn't questioning it. There's a lot of things going through her mind right now. That's it's a 14. She genuinely seems that she wants you all to come, but you think that she has plans. And she wants to walk into the jungle. The I'm gonna like else. elbow bump Suzanne as everyone's walking and yeah, just sort of like like side eye Susan and side like look at the dryad. Well, we have to see if she has any gold for her rescue. I don't think she's gonna have gold. Well, she can do all that with the ground. What 
maybe she'll find a gold deposit and lift it up. Is everything with you about money? Money keeps me on the move. And it keeps me safe. Okay, okay. Before, Lead on. Before, this foliage was very difficult to traverse. Um, it was only the natural 20 on your freaking nature check that you avoided all of the hazards I put in here. But it seems like the forest almost parts ways for Alorna. As she leads you in deeper and deeper into the forest. Into a wide open glade. Where a single tree is at the center. She touches it. Almost caressing it. As if meeting a long lost friend after so many years of being apart. Oh, well. Alexon will say like a little mini prayer to Melora as she enters the area. She does, Lorna definitely does hear that. You see, she glances at you from over her shoulder and gives you a little smile. Please sit. I need to, I need to rest for a while. She holds up her hand as you see stumps are coming up from the ground, one for each of you. Please rest. There will be food. And we will talk Thank you. in the morning. As you mm -hmm. see this figure, her hand goes back onto the tree and seems to melt inside of it. Quick point of clarification, just from a player's perspective. Um, she said in the morning, right? Do right. we not only have one day left? Uh, you are supposed to come back the following day, so you would have to come back, go to the ship during that day. Okay, well, okay. All right. I just, I just wanted to make sure, like, as a player, we don't miss the deadline. Correct. So... Do you guys sit down? Miyagi stands for a little while and just sort of watches around. Okay. A little perception check for me. Elkson, what do you do? Then we'll go ahead and just sit down and... I... 19. I'm going to go ahead and cast Goodberry. Okay. As you sit down and you're getting ready to cast, actually, you see before you wood starts to grow out of the ground and twists and turns into a small mini table. And from that table, you see what's Elkson's favorite food? Bubbly. Smoked salmon. You see salmon appear, smoked with a little lemon pepper, steaming along next to a cup of the clearest water you've ever seen. Ooh. I'm going to druid craft some tea leaves and put them in the water. Okay. <laughs> If you would like, if you prefer tea, that tea will be there. <laughs> and then she'll start eating. Yeah, she's not. Okay. I need she's to roll 2d8 suspicious. for me and let me know the results later. Okay. Miyagi, seeing this, what do you do? Miyagi's going to be a little cautious. Okay. Now, is there. There's a table, right? Is it's there a enough... small mini table right in front of Elkson because she sat down? He's going to beckon the others to sit down before he sits down. Did I get anything on that perception check or no? Yes, you did. You definitely hear some birds chirping. Um, 
almost a songbird singing. And just other wildlife. But nothing else of note. <laughs> Hondir will go and sit down. And you see before him appears a thick, juicy, uh, looks like steak, but it's not steak. <laughs> it's that one wrong. Uh, but no, thick salmon piece, because he's also a sailor. He loves fish. Along with what looks like, um, I, th I know what I'm th thinking of, but I can't think of it. I know. Um, scallops. There we go. Of seared scallops and butter. And a thick cup of dark mead. And he starts eating. So Zen and Shield sit down. Shield doesn't have anything but water up here. And water. So Zen has an extravagant, delicate piece of what looks like a game bird that has been decorated and has a gold leaf uh, on it. Um, has even cucumbers folded into what looks like roses. She eat the gold leaf or does she take the gold it. leaf? Why <laughs> <laughs> could? So, Miyagi, what are you doing? Favorite food, Miyagi? He'll cautiously sit down. Same and questions. your favorite dish is in front of you. Smoke tuna in a glass of milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going heavy on the cat stuff, man. My cat, my, my name's freaking Miyagi. And then, <laughs> do you partake? Don't we? We've partaken Yes, you do? Yes. I need you to roll 2d8. All right. Mine. What did you get on yours, Elkson? A 12. Those are temporary hit points. You are under the effect of Hero's Feast. Yeah! I don't always have nasty surprises for my players. And those are your uh, temporary hit points. You are under the effects of Hero's Feast. Ooh. Ooh. All of that fear that you felt before, Elkson, is nothing. You have had doubts about yourself. Also, point of order, after you all eat, all of you could become extremely tired. And subconsciously, you start to lay down. Your stumps actually grow and form into a bed of soft leaves. Extremely comfortable. And everyone falls asleep. Y'all get a full night's rest. <laughs> As you're sleeping, however, okay, here it comes. Elkson, you have been filled with doubt. You questioned even your choice of going onto the road. But because of this hero's feast, you just saved the life of a dryad. Someone who is so connected to nature. If it wasn't for you, she was probably on death's door. You stopped that. And you feel confident that the more you learn, the stronger you'll get. Miyagi. You have a different dream. You dream of combat. Oops. 
the last combat that you had that you heard of? Those zombies riddled with the green worms. It was... It felt weird. It felt familiar. But you've... Maybe it's just because you just faced zombies before. And you all wake up the following day, fully rested, with the dryad standing there before you. So I'm going to get up and stretch and do one of those like wide mouth, like tongue out yawns. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> Yell at him. He's just trying to eat. Okay, honey, don't good. Be I thought that was my dogs for a second. No, that was my cats. Like, honey, honey doesn't like to like share her cat bowl, <laughs> and so Toby's just trying to be a kitten, you know, get some food. And honey, honey does not like. It. <laughs> but we have another cat bowl in the other room. They're not friends, but Toby tries. Isn't that right? Well, yeah, be a chunky. I have destroyed the lich's lair underneath. Inside check. Roll it. Exactly. What exactly is a lich? A lich is a spellcaster who has determined that they do not belong to the mortal coil and enter into undeath so they can continue to live. 16, by the way. She seems legit. So that they is... die so they can live? As undead. More intelligent what? undead. They keep their faculties about them. I just rolled my divination for that the day. That just doesn't make any sense for me. Well. Okay. Some casters believe that they're cheated by... By the time they get old and they are about to die of natural causes. And they do not want to pass on after they have achieved such power. Nobody wants to. Doesn't mean you gotta go be undead. I happen to agree with you on that, but Can... what was this guy doing exactly? I think Upon Hearing the term lich multiple times, can I do like an arcana religion check to see if I know anything about them, or would it just be like, oh, you lived in a church your entire life, you know nothing? You can do an arcana check. Okay. I've got work. twenty-three. Twenty-three. You have heard a little bit about liches. Um, unfortunately, it's pretty much what uh, a learner has just devised and told you all. Um, okay. They are extremely powerful casters who have determined that they don't want to go into the cycle of life and death, uh, so they remove themselves from that cycle. And in doing so, they become undead themselves, but they can effectively be immortal. So, I think the reward is in order. Elksa. Come here, child. Yeah, because then I'll just kind of walk over like a surprise puppy. You see, she reaches out with her hands, but then stops right before touching the side of your face. As if she's trying to be respectful. She will hold, put both of her hands on the side of your face. You gave me hope when I had none. Thank you. I see my favorite girl. Just... Please, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say everyone deserves to have hope. And there are many of those out there who will try to take that away. hope that I 
can help you on your journey. And you see she reaches towards her tree and removes a branch. Not snapping it, it seems to just come off at her will. And you see her starting to fold the wood. Almost into the shape of a bow. You see her reach up to her head and snatch a few pieces of hair as she wraps it around the bow in the shape of a bowstring. She then brings the bow close to her lips and kisses it. And it seems to just grow slightly. The ends seem to curve a little bit, leaving the bowstring nice and taut. But it still looks like it's living wood. It's not carved. It's not sanded down. It is wood. I hope my gift will help you. She hands it over to you. You see, Elkson has like the biggest puppy dog eyes and like is practically on the verge of tears. And she just does a really, really deep bow. Like, thank you. As she bows to you. She stands up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was getting Lord of the Rings vibes. Yeah. Like, you don't need to bow, bow to anyone, my friends. Alex is just starting to get flustered at this point and just kind of like hugging the bow. I am sorry, that is all I have strength to do. No, no, no. They, 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 thank you. It, this you, you didn't even need to do this. I did. I must be with my tree for a while now. Will you all be here when I wake up? Not. I think we have to leave. I understand. I would suggest that you move your tree elsewhere, just in case you didn't kill all the big bad guys. It was only that easy. It was just food for thought. If you need something in the future, you could send a critter to me or something. I might just do that. Check in on you. Hmm. I wish you well, all. Thank you. But beware, because I... He was very... I hope that you did not leave any evidence that it's you who came into his lair. I didn't hear anything you said, Damien. I, I, I don't think so. I wish you all... It's not like we carved our name inside. Or release people who gave, you gave their names to. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 As Alorna melts back in with her tree, what do you all do? Need to get back to the ship now. Mm -hmm. Susan, do you think you could send your bird and let them know that we're on our way back? Uh, that might be a good idea, but it's so troublesome. She sends her bird. Elkson, taking some time to attune this weapon, you know exactly what it does. It is up to you if you would like to share that with the stream. Magic item. Magic item. Share. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so it's a long bow. Um, I gain a plus one to bonus to attack and damage rolls. And this bow has three charges that can be used to cast good berry. These berries only last for one hour after being plucked from the bow. Hi, Crystal. Uh, you're on stream. Oh, there's Crystal. <laughs> uh, the wielder of the bow has advantage on saving throws against charm-like spells and effects. <laughs> and you, the paragraph above the plus one? 
Uh, the bow transforms normal branches into arrows for an attuned wielder. Arrows made in this fashion revert to their normal state after being removed from their target or instantly on a miss. The bowstring is unbreakable. And the name of the weapon. Lorna's Gift. Yep. Uh, also, you don't have to mention this. However, you should uh, look at the attunement requirements at the very, very top. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, you guys start to head back to the ship. As you're walking, Hondir will raise his hand to have everybody hold. Friends, myself and Sheena have something to tell you. What is wrong? We all know the future that is in store for Sheena here. Being the only one of her kind. That we know of. That anyone knows of. And what do you think will happen to her? People will want to study her. And how do people study other beings taking them apart exactly sheena represents the best that morden has as he looks at sheena and just smiles i think this is what morden has in store for me gonna get her out of here we are going to stay we are going to, myself and Sheena, are going to try to fix more of her brethren and leave this place. So, so then you may have my share of the loot, as he chuckles. But what if the lich thing guy comes back? Well, then I will have to work fast, won't I? These people, these warforged, must be Moradin's chosen. He's the battlesmith. He's the creator. I cannot ignore this call. I understand. It doesn't mean I'm happy with it. I know. He'll go up to Suzanne and say a few words in a hushed tone. And he'll go up to Miyagi. You are not as clever as you think. But you have a dashing smile, and that might help you. <laughs> Miyagi's going to give him a big hug. <laughs> I'm going to miss you, church brother. <laughs> he'll go up to Elvis. Strengthen you that you do not see yet, but you are not immune to getting hurt. Know your strengths, know your friend's strengths, and use them. I end up, I'll try and help them as much as you helped me. Of that, I have no doubt. She'll give him a big hug. He'll give you a hug. We must be alone. If you all need us, just let us know, okay? Absolutely. I have a way oh. of getting a hold of you. Yeah, you could talk to Alona and she can get a hold of me. Absolutely. As Sheena and Hondir disappear back into the forest. Next, then I'll do another little prayer to Melora to watch over them. Meowgi will do a little prayer to Arathis to guide them to help them. All right. 
Poor basket of church kids. <laughs> <laughs> and on we that should, note, uh... I think good way to take a break really quick so please stay with us we're going to take a short break i have to do some tech things on the back end um to get everything ready and hopefully uh we'll continue on and see what else is up with our heroes see y'all soon
All righty, we are going live here in just a, a mint moment. ice cream cone. Here we go. All righty. And we are live, I believe. Yep. Someone talk, just to make sure. Hello. All right, everybody can hear. Good. <laughs> Too late, Crystal. Got you on stream. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All righty, we are back. A little bit longer break. I had a... Uh, Make sure I get a couple things done and all that. So our party has just said bye to one of its founding members and the person they rescued. As the three of you are walking up towards the Sapphire Cathedral, which is the ship. The first thing that you notice is damage on the ship. Actually, the they were here. getting that fixed. Or... <laughs> Isn't that what they had asked? Go join them. For? It, uh, it was, if I recall correctly, it was stuck on some reef, some reefs, and and, and Ath will speak uh, speak up and say, uh, it, "That's what they wanted you to think, but it was uh, that's what they thought at first. But it was actually a mutineer mutiny attempt by some freaking pansy." I split him in two. Oh. Inside check. The player or the <laughs> Meowgi? <laughs> Meowgi. Just yeah. simply because. Thank you for the follow. Simply because I don't recall, and this is just a player speaking, I don't recall Ath splitting something in two during that whole like dungeon run, so it's just Meowgi thinking okay. like Roll in an insight. If if it's not whether or not, just to explain, it's not whether or not Ath split the thing into. It's whether or not she has the strength to do it. And I get a fourteen. Ath is one hundred percent clear. You're a lot stronger than I thought. I wield these as she holds up her two great axes. Can you I don't hide behind and fling little. Lights. I like my lights. Thank you very much. They're pretty good lights. Hey, lights. And then what as you guys continue to approach the ship, you just also remember, what was your mission there? Bring back something interesting. Yeah. And what do you have to show for it? Books. <laughs> Books and a sword. There we go. What sword? Sazen's sword. Oh, Sazen's sword. Yeah, I think Sazen's going to be hiding that sword. <laughs> oh, Meowgi will make it known. <laughs> yeah, Alexan would see why they would hide it. Because it just needs to be studied. As you, as you guys get on to a little dinghy that was left out for you. And your ath is going to row you back to the ship. You hear the sounds of working going on. Seems the crew has definitely been uh, working pretty damn hard to uh, make the repairs, but it might be a little bit until she's seaworthy again. Climbing up the rope ladder onto the deck, first person you see is Reginald. Oh, you've returned! Hi! What did you find? Please tell me you found something. Well, there was lots and lots of undead. Um, really? Do you like books by chance? Oh, I absolutely love books. I, I would. I have many, many books. Uh, uh, what, what, what? One moment, one moment. Did you see him holding up a stone? He's holding a stone and he's putting it to his ear. Well, I'm sorry that you were delayed. But I had to continue on. Uh, we booked passage. What do you mean that you're coming here? Oh, okay. Please. Uh, do stand back, please. As he moves his hands, like, trying to push you away. Yeah, I guess going to take a step back. As you kind see, the air seems to twirl a little bit. Little dust particles seem to 
almost form a cyclone, but nothing that is actually symmetrical. It doesn't like turn, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise. It forms into a ball as there's a flash of blue light and the sense of ozone. As you see, who do they see in front of them? A gnome appears. <laughs> okay. And how does the dressed, gnome look? Dressed dressed in leathers. And a and a and a trench coat. Carrying a crossbow. Golden colors. Accents. Dark beard. Real gruff looking. Well, I told you to wait for me. Well, I can't just leave. We, we, I had to just leave. It's not that I couldn't just leave. I just could not. It, I could not hold the ship up. They had other passengers. Uh, well, at least the information I gave you was it any good? Well, I. Uh, I, I'm getting a report right now, and don't worry. It apparently, was filled with undead, but I'm sure that they left some alive that we could alive. Are undead really alive? Um, uh, uh, place, more the whole together. place crumbled behind us. As you see, his jaw just drops. What? It's like you kicked oh. his puppy. Oh yes. Apparently, there was a lich in there. He did not like people, so he had multiple groups of undead. They were quite unpleasant, and they almost killed this one, and maybe he's going to point to Both times. Uh, uh, um, but, and unfortunately, our Minotaur friend, I'm sure you can tell we're one person short, they were called away for... Uh, well, you had another person, too, uh, an elf with you, didn't you? Yes, she also, unfortunately, was pulled away. Something about deities and gods requesting champions or some shit? See, uh, well, this while is... you're talking, the gnome pulls out a large book and just starts making notes in it. See, and this is why I don't go for your sense of devout worship, because you always get called away, and you never get to actually experience every, anything. Trust me, we made it here, we brought you goods brought you information so and Miyagi's going to rifle through his bag and hand over his books um so are these. tell me about the lick we don't know much about it um there was demons trapped in there yes demons. something something demons. about hmm. something about statues so like every statue we came across it was missing um, the left hand and the left eye, for whatever reason. Left hand. Left How does Reginald react? Hmm. He's he's just writing down, just writing down. He's gonna process it later. Um. What but, kind of undead did you run into? Like skin things that like to suffocate you. They they didn't have any bones either. It was quite no like bones. There was uh, floating skulls, wasn't there? Yes, floating skulls. There was um, those ones would come back if you didn't do something specific. Um, there was a giant, for lack of a better word, I don't know what to call it, but a flying meatball with multiple eyes. Yeah, Fly meatball. Yeah, it was uh, like a whole bunch of. Eyes. And she's like doing this gesturing over her head. Oh, oh. oh and a big oh, one. Oh. Um. Yes. A beholder. Wow. I haven't seen one of those in a while. A beholder. You guys took down a beholder. Oh. It was already dead. Let's just preface that. It, it was, was already... undead. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, it was oh, undead, yeah. but it was. My research has shown that the anti-magical properties of the beholders are nullified in undeath. Isn't that what you found as well? 
Yes, I didn't even know that they could cancel out magic. That's news Oh, to yes, me. it's a, it's a uh, very fast... I didn't even know they could be undead. Neither did I. Well, I, I've heard rumors, but... Oh, um, oh, where are my so manners? So that, like, conglomeration of a bunch of, like, undead arms? <laughs> like, it was just the arms for some reason? Just the arms? Hmm. Um, That's interesting. There was a whole bunch of worms, too. Oh, yeah, creepy yellow-green ones that were in a lot of the zombies. Oh, oh, you didn't you didn't get bitten by any of them, did you? Nope, squished them. No. Oh, good, good, good. We, we might, these people seem to be rather powerful. We might have to uh, fund their expeditions. I'll tell you right here, right now, Reggie. But that would make Suzanne happy. If... Do you send us to other places like this? I'll gladly go retrieve books for you if that's what you want. Oh, yes, books. Let me see the books. And Miyagi's going to hand over. He's been holding a stack of books that he has. He takes them. And he stuffs them down into a sack. What? What was Thank you so much. Hey, now, I need to get a look at some of those, too, you know. Okay. Have you ever heard of someone called Elidor or Elidon, something like that? That, appa- that apparently was the lich's name? I will make a roll. No, I've never heard of an Eladon. Um, what else? Oh, where are my manners? Uh, as he's cataloging these books, uh, introduce yourself. Oh, yeah, right. Um, uh, yeah, um... Helwig von Lichtenstein. It is a pleasure to meet you. Welcome aboard. And Miyagi's going to stick out. Oh, cleric artificer of Palor. I am Miyagi. I am a wizard. Do I have to do anything? He really pays no attention to you other than the book in his hand and taking notes. (laughs) Absolutely fine. All right. Um, my name is Alexan. I, I, I'm, I'm good with the bow and nature stuff. Uh, he nods at you and continues writing in the book. <laughs> it is at this point in time you hear somebody <clears throat> and to the side you see Silas Weatherstrom there. It's good that you all have come back, and it seems we have an additional passenger. Well, not all of us came back. Not all of us. Noticed. Do we have to uh, retrieve anything? No. You didn't leave their bodies behind, did you? No, they didn't. No, deny. it's not. No. Their, their, gar- their gods pulled them away. But of course. <laughs> well, but at least you won't become undead. Hate to have to hunt down your friends. Alex and like actively shivers at the thought. Well, Captain Talia would like to see you and apparently our new passenger as well. How are things with you, Silas? It's been rough. Should see the captain. Yes. You notice he's definitely not smiling at this point in time he um has a depressed look on his face do you need help with your with you should, go, the ship? you should go see the captain come on show up to walk over <laughs> right. you guys are sent to the captain's quarters as you enter the first thing that draws your attention is the large poster bed it's in the back left of the room Draped over the sides are almost translucent cloth. That seems to sway as if there's a breeze going through the cabin that you can't feel. A very subtle scent of old parchment, almost and an almost sweetness, and similar to elderberry, can be detected over the overwhelming taste of coffee in the air. Looking over to the central table, you'll see the captain, who normally you've seen her on her feet always moving back and forth. But she's sitting down now. 
an individual who you definitely do recognize. Very green skin, green bluish skin with long flowing hair. His armor adorned with what looks to be like living starfish and old fishing nets. Graylin, the Triton, is kneeling at her side, tending an open wound to her back. Or, I'm sorry, to the, uh, the side of her stomach. Well then, it seems our illustrious adventuring party has returned. And we have a uh, new person. Who are you? Wow. That looks like it hurt. Oh, uh, Helvog von Lichtenstein. Oh, yes, you were on the original contract, but you were delayed. You seem to be absent some people. What's happened? Tyrese called them away. First, the elf. Um, something about, if I recall correctly, children, people. They had someone to save, and then... Uh, the Minotaur, he, his deity moored and called him away. Hmm. But That is a shame. I'd like having uh, Pandir here. He helped out with the navigation. That he did, but... <clears throat> uh, are you alright, Captain? I just swapped voices for a second. That's not the right voice. We <laughs> really had some difficulty member of my crew thought that they would make a better captain. Unfortunately, they did take Molly's life. As a player? That was as a player. Please don't think that as Meow Gear. That was a player. <laughs> Sorry. What do you mean? What happened? Balin, I seem to pick up a few tricks uh, out on his, his time out on the sea and entered into some pact with some otherworldly being. And they marooned our ship here and were sacrificing people and attempted to sacrifice myself, Silas, and Molly. Ath. And she nods towards Ath. Helped us deal with this mutineer. <laughs> she spits on the ground. Did you get last rights, dear Molly? She's been sent out to sea. I'm Wouldn't so want her coming back. Your... I'm so sorry for your loss. Yes. I am too. She will be missed. Molly the Red. You... Molly ah! the... <laughs> gotcha. Molly the Red, who would either leave you on the ground bleeding or red in the face from losing a drinking contest with her. <laughs> she lifts up a glass of what appears to be wine and then drinks it. Do you need a hug? She laughs and chuckles a little bit. It hurts. Her. Looks, looks more like uh, the captain needs some stitches instead of a hug. Leyland has, has me here. It's, the wound is difficult to heal. Well, captain, if you would just stay off your feet as I've asked you to. It would heal a lot quicker. Can I help somehow? I know a little healing. I thank you, Elkson, but uh, I am going to stick with the healers I know for now. The sense of betrayal is still uh, fresh yeah. in my nose. It's okay. Well, we will be off here soon. I assume that uh, we have another area that uh, Mythor would like us to explore. Way less undead in this one? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, do you face undead? I mean, apparently something called a lich. You faced off against the lich. No, oh, no, no, no. It, it supposedly one lives there. Really? Mm-hmm. A lich. As mm-hmm. he, she looks over to the gnome. A fucking lich. Uh, hey, <laughs> I just had a map of the place. I didn't know what was in it. Oh, a fucking lich. <laughs> you had me bring my crew to a deserted island with a fucking lich. Oh, not to mention the numerous demons, devils, and fiends there. Hey, yeah, you know... I had multiple demons trapped there. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> now. Is she talking to us? Yes, or... all oh. of you. <laughs> okay. That was a player asking. <laughs> Alex and scurries out. What the... Uh, that's all you hear is the door slams. <laughs> You're giving this poor woman a heart attack. Silence! Hey. <clears throat> Paylor oh. sends you somewhere. You gotta expect some nasty shit. Alexan just has like a child that was just caught in trouble look right now. Like. She doesn't really know what to do, so she's just standing there. See Silas run run into the office. Set my pack down, reach in, grab a couple of books, and pull out a bigger book and start flipping through it. See what I can find in that book on liches. All right. Uh, Go and roll a percentile for me. Yeah, working on it. Um, Go check on uh, Thunderbolt. Alrighty. You go check on Thunderbolt. He is perfectly fine. He looks to be very well maintained by Gremlin. So then we should we should probably go meet with Mythorb and discuss. You do that. I am off to do the laundry. Sixty six. Oh no you're not. <laughs> and I'm going to try and reach out and grab specifically the spark blade. I need you to do a roll. What sort of roll? Uh, just roll me a d20. All right. I have to check Suzanne's character sheet. Because if she has this one spell, she's using it. Did you yep. get that? Yep, I got it. Uh, That's... You reach out for Suzanne as her body turns into mist as she misty steps away. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Snap my finger, misty step. <laughs> I am going to do the laundry. I will talk to Reginald later. I need some time away. Will you at least show him the soul? After we leave this place, yes. Okay. Um, you gain, looking at liches, um, the same general information that they have already learned. But what you, in addition, you learn about a phylactery. You know that it is an item normally made of uh, of great worth that will house the lich's soul. And you must destroy that to actually destroy the lich. So, did you guys find anything that was really valuable? I, I think at this point, everybody's gone except Ath. Probably because I went after Sazen. So, uh, typical. So, Bolt and telling Thunderbolt all about what happened <laughs> and just <laughs> um, after that whole escapade with Susan, I think Meowki would go speak with Mythor. Alrighty. So the entire party has scattered. Yes. <laughs> on the ship, and I'm left there standing with a book, getting ready to <laughs> lecture and go where they go. You do see Silas rush out of the office. And he looks at you. You can just go bunk with them. And he gives you directions to their room. It's one large room. Uh, we have to be off very shortly. Bye. Meowgi. You go look for Reginald. 
Um, and you do pass the new gnome. Helvog? As yes. he's putting his books away and you see Silas running off. Barking orders at people. Uh, hi. Lichtenstein? Lichtenstein? Um, yes? I'm Miyagi. I'm not sure if we've done introductions, but I'm Miyagi. The Dragonborn Elks in the Gnomes, the Zen, and Ath. As I call it, Big Green. Um, I'm on my way to go speak with Reginald about some of the things we went through. Would you like to accompany me? Yeah, sure. I need notes. Okay. I have a feeling Lichtenstein and Miyagi are about to be good friends. Oh, by the way, you guys, when you took care of this lich, you didn't have to take care of the phylactery, did you? What's a phylactery? Oh, joy. Important point well, of clarification. <laughs> they did not say, they did say that the lich was not there. Ah, okay. Scratch that. And I have purposely, I have purposely, I don't want to, and this is just Josh, the player, talking. I've misled the situation to where we have not mentioned the Warforged. No, we have not, not mentioned, mentioned the Dryad. Not mentioned the Dryad. Uh, trust me, I've, not, I've been listening. <laughs> okay, cool. I just wanted to preface that, or at least follow through with that. Elkson, as you're taking care of Thunderbolt, you feel... A warm breeze on the back of your neck. And you hear a Lorna's voice in your ear. I am leaving to the Feywild. I will check in on you every now and then. But I need to leave this place. It is not safe. You need to leave this place. Like, knowing that they can't see her, but just reflexively nods anyway. <laughs> you can speak your words, and I will hear them. It seems like we're leaving really soon. <laughs> we're going to be going someplace else, I guess. Hopefully it won't be so bad. But please stay safe. And if you and happen I... to see my friend, and I just grab my friend. After you hear, after you say safe, you feel the breeze go away. Oh. Send in. Meowgi, you are with Helvog and looking for Reginald as he is scribbling copies of the books. Uh, feel free to link uh, Helvog those books as well. Okay, and exactly what are you telling them? <clears throat> and I'm assuming I've come up to Myth Orb at this point? Absolutely. Next time you have us go fetch books or artifacts, I recommend telling us beforehand what we're dealing with. Well, if we knew what we were dealing with, we would have known what we were dealing with. We never went inside. Helvog only found this map. And we verified the source of ruins, and then we needed adventurers. Helvog <laughs> normally goes in on his own uh, sometimes, but he is, uh, we decided to go a safer route this time. Yeah, oh, I see what that got you. It got us more books. Yeah, and dead people. Let me just say, I think the rest of us are excited for another adventure or whatever follows suit. However, a little more information forthcoming would be better. And I understand the situation. I absolutely understand. But if there are things that you feel as though we should know beforehand, that would be great telling us. However, we did find those books, 
and Sizen will have something to show you once she's done with laundry. Oh, I cannot wait. Well, believe me, now that I'm here, we're going to get a little bit more information before we go in, Havcock. But did there were metal people, for lack of a better term, around the area? Metal people? They were, they were all, no. Automatons? I want to say that's right, but... None of them could speak or were even living. Hmm. So there were a collection of gears and cogs and... So metal were they, parts? Were, were, they, um, were they a solid piece of metal or were they inner workings? It seemed a bit of... A mixture, like some of them had metal, some of them were like wood, stone even, but you could tell that they weren't golems, I think you called them. Um, oh, we, we must go and retrieve some of them. N- no. That would be a great asset to our research. N- no. Listen, let them rest. And at this point in time. I, so they were alive. No, no, they won't. At this point in time, everybody will hear a bell ring. All hands on deck. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, go into the crow's nest. Okay. Go into... with a red cap. (laughs) Well, no, this is the bell that symbolizes everybody needs to get on deck. Just to oh, announce oh. oh, okay. It's not an attack bell. Attack bell sounds a little different and is in a little different tone. You see the crew is gathered. All of you gather up on the front of the deck. You see the captain standing there. It looks... She looks well now. Uh, for those of you who have recently seen her, though, you can see little beads of sweat on her forehead. She's putting up a brave face right now. She's still very wounded. All right. We have had a hell of a time. That is, uh, to put it lightly. We have another ruin to, to investigate. However, I believe this crew in recent days have de- deserved a bit of a break. We are setting out to the islands of the Moth. As you see the rest of the crew. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. The Moth. There you will be given shore leave for a short time before we set foot. We need to dock. We need to repair the ship. But we all need to leave this place immediately. You will be worked hard, double shifts, repairing as we go. You hear a couple mummers of, "Ah, damn it. Well, still worth it to go to Damoth. Excuse me, what's (laughs) Damoth? Damoth is a, um, well, they earn their living providing for others. There's a shipyard there, and, uh, Place where people with coin go for vacation. Sandy beaches and no monsters. Nice. No, you got that wrong. There's monsters. They're everywhere. What? Well, then, our little uh, stowaway. If there are monsters, we will send you. Fair deal? Fair deal. Until then, those of you who are on the expedition, you have the next two days off. Then you will need to rejoin the rest of the crew. 
Have at it. Get the job done. You'll be well rested. Crowd breaks away. You see, at first, when you first came on, they were definitely... Their morale had took a hit. They're in higher spirits now. Silas helps the captain back to her quarters. What do the rest of you do? I think Miyagi would go and is Sazen there? Sazen was there. She's not anymore. Okay. I think Miyagi would head to the to head to our quarters just to reflect on okay. everything that had happened. Fair enough. And probably would too. Okay. Well, good because I'll have them all in one place, and I'm going to interrogate them all. <laughs> Meowgi. As you come in, you find your cot. Uh, you had a hammock, actually. Uh, you see that there is an addition to your hammock. It's a pillow. Very soft, velvet, very comfortable. This is new. Hello. Alexin, you come into the room. It's just how you left it. And you guys see Helvog come into the room. Hey, hello. Long hey, name. Good, I got you all in one place now. Alex then is just going to go sit on her bed. Uh, uh, first, I look around for a couple of hooks to hang a hammock on. <laughs> there's actually spare hammocks there because they had two more people in their party that are not there anymore. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll, I set my stuff down. Right, get into my into my pack um i i open the pack and i start reaching in and i almost disappear into the pack pulling out books then i sit down and i start to interrogate them and get all the information on everything that happened Wait, wait. And now, I'm gonna be spacing out and like not really paying attention to him at all. Now, Hellbog, I would like you to roll an insight check at the start of your interrogation. Miyagi, you were saying something. When he starts to interrogate us, Miyagi's going to look to each and every one, everyone in the room, except Hellbog, and just sort of like give them a look, like saying, trying to come off across as. Do not share what we don't want. Now what do you want? And insight. 23. These Fuck. people are extremely worn down. They have been through multiple days of sleeping in a dungeon under constant threat. They are stressed. They are tired. You've seen this before. Um, people who have been on the front lines in war. It's very similar. So how about... Drew and craft a little doll made out of vines. And just kind of... What all do I, you guys are not in the right frame of mind. What do you want to know? I'll tell you. I'll catch up with you in the morning. Rest. Think about things. I'll get it all. I prefer to do it now while it's all fresh in your mind, but you guys look like you're... I told you in Mithu of all that. He did have a good chance of uh, downloading a lot of information. Okay. So, it would be 
getting to be dusk very soon because of the trek through the forest or through the jungle and all that. You guys are able to take another long rest. Is is anybody hurt? Miyaki, I think, was the most injured. But they actually had a long rest, so they, they were perfectly fine. You see some scrapes and um, bruises or something, and you can definitely help out with your medicine. Alexan has a scar on her nose, like a burn scar that she's permanently, like, she's leaving it there. If they have, if, if, if they don't have anything that is open and wounded, chicks dig scars. <laughs> I, you know, I've got them <laughs> from my monster hunts. I'm just going to sit down, pull out the crossbow, pull tools off of my vest, and I'm just going to tinker with my crossbow. Okay. You guys get a full night's rest. And in the morning, and of course, Josh had to go for a second, <laughs> and I had something for him. Let's see. Okay, now he's coming back. Maybe not. <laughs> you gotta love that. Um, Hel yeah. Helvog, you are able to get a good bit of information um, from what they have uh, told you throughout the night. Yeah, I'm just gonna add notes into my books on, oh, you saw this, and okay. descriptions, and what it did, and how it acted. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm filling out my own books. Okay. I think it's just during the interrogation phase. Well, no, he he stopped and let you all oh. rest for the night. Oh, okay. Uh, in the morning, you all wake up, fully rested, a little less weary. Your muscles. Not quite as stiff, a little bit, um, but sleeping on a hammock is much, much better than sleeping on the cold, cold stone. Yeah. Can yeah. Actually, Alexon, what do you do first thing in the morning? I'm going to go check on the animals, like not just Thunderbolt, but also the other ones that I saw. Snow? Yeah. The tiger. All right. See if any of them are distraught or anything. And... All right. Uh, Helvog and Miyagi, you both wake up at the same time. You stretch. Well, I'm up before the dawn because oh, I have to greet the dawn. <laughs> that's true. You are the first one up and out. So Helvog is not there. You guys have noticed that the ship is moving now. Not quite as fast as it could be moving. Miyagi, you're left alone and you wake up in an empty room. Everyone else has gone off to do their their tasks. When you wake up, the first thing you see on the ground is a mouse. But it's dead. And it's left right in front of your bed. Oh, you poor soul. I'm just going to take the mouse. Do, I, do we have a window? Uh, you do not have a porthole here, no. Um, roll perception check for me. Can do. Can do. Skills. Perception. You notice that the mouse has been um, cut in the stomach. Some of its innards are out, uh, kind of sprayed out towards you. But also on the forehead, it looks like there's a mark of an X on its forehead, um, on its head. Mm. Not enough to cause injury, but it's scraped the fur away. 
Oh, fuck. Um. And we'll come back to you. Elkson. You go and visit Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is really happy today. And it seems like they were getting worried that you weren't around every day. And they saw you the first time when you first came in. But see you the very next day, too. He thinks that you're back permanently. Hey, then. Then. Good to see you. He nuzzles up into the uh, into your the crook of your neck. Giving him lots of scratches, and... <laughs> and you hear a low growl behind you. Hi, Snow. <laughs> Just look over at Snow and smile at her. You see, she Snow hat hunches down as if they're gonna pounce but you see them bouncing back up and down <laughs> sort of playful yeah you want to play you want to play and Allison's gonna start like doing the motion back uh roll an animal handling check <laughs> Alexson is so happy to be Elkson's having animal fun time and Miyagi's gonna That's stick funny. with it. sacred admirer you see that Snow not only jumps over the cage as if they could do that all the time, but will play with you and like go underneath your legs to try and knock you down, <laughs> but then, and then actually licks the side of your face. Elkson is just giggling away the whole time and playing. Helvog, after your morning ritual, where you greet the sun. Um, I'm assuming that you asked for permission to go to the crow's nest. It's the highest point in the on the ship, and that way you could be as close to the sun as possible. Oh, yeah, definitely. You feel the warmth of Paylor. You feel the fresh air, the salt air going through. There's a bit of spray still hitting you. Even up on the crow's nest, you feel just a little bit of moisture. After your ritual and you're climbing back down, you're greeted by this very dashing human. Um, hair just seems to always be flowing. But he looks like he has a more serious look on his face that's not normal for him. You know this individual is Silas Weatherstrom, from, who was running, who gathered you for the captain and then was rushed back into the captain's office after you guys were ushered out. Uh, Helvog, is it? Yeah. I heard what that you, can I do for you, Silas? I heard that you uh, have some skills in some of the healing arts. We have some uh, minor injuries, if you wouldn't mind uh, taking a look at them. No, no, not at all. No. Thank you. And he starts to bring you around. Uh, you see that first place that he brings you is towards the galley. And there is an orc there. Very, very beefy, as if he was, might have been an adventurer at one point in time, but then started to like eating more. Big Boy, red big nose. <laughs> oh, yes, little one. My name's Hargus. How are you? Oh, well, I'm doing all right. Uh, you're the healer. Among other things. Well... We'll talk about those other things later. I, I could use something here. As he shows you his chest that is just a mismatch of scarred flesh. Um, that is just... Um, it's sealed up. You know, the it's actually... Um, I can't even think of the name of the word now, but... It, it's scabbed up. There we go. It has scabs all over the place. It looks like he was scab cut up. Scabs or scars? Scab. Okay. So he's definitely still down some hit points. Sure, I can take care of that. I'll give you an extra turkey leg tonight. <laughs> and you see that they have set up a little triage center for you there. 
There are a couple people with some serious injuries. Horgus is actually the worst of it, so nobody is in threat of dying right now. Uh, but it goes down all the way down to somebody with a bout of scurvy, and you tell them to eat more of the oranges. Yeah. Um, but that's going to take up like half of your day right there. That's fine. That's that's normal Paylar business. Exactly. <laughs> Meowgi. I was trying to give you time to eat. Let's do it. What are you doing? Pizza uh, gives him powers. Uh, I think Miyagi would first dispose of the mouse. How do you dispose of it? Find the nearest port hole and throw it out. Alrighty. And then head back to his room and just watch the door the entire day. Okay. Just tapping at his... As you head back to the door... Or your room, you see two mice now. Like fresh. under my un like fresh mice look like Freshly mice? killed. Oh. I I'm just gonna say fuck this and cast detect magic. Okay. Nothing other than what's around that you normally would realize that is magical. And when I found those two mice, they're underneath my cot, right? Or right. my uh, hammock? It's not directly underneath. It's as if it's right there. Like, you come, you swing your legs down, and it's right in front of you. Mm. Definitely in front of your, your hammock. Miyagi's going to dispose of those two. And they still have the same markings? Yes, they do. Dispose of those two and come back. Are there more mice? No. This time, this it's a fish that's still alive. Eventually, the ship will run out of mice. <laughs> it's a rather fat salmon. Well, actually, not salmon because that's a freshwater fish. We'll go with, um, it looks like it's an, an eel. Still wiggling around. Mm. And we'll come back. <laughs> Elkson. Snow. <sighs> Goes back. Paws at her cage. Looking rather tired. Yeah, Elkson will open it up and let her go back in. Goes in and plops down. Pops it back up. No, it's fine. I'm glad you like me now. It doesn't even say anything. It doesn't. <laughs> They're tired. Mm hmm. Now, like then we'll start going up on deck of ship to kind of see what's going on, get the general feel. Um, if anybody seems particularly stressed, maybe she'll like druid craft a little flower or something and give it to them. There are a few people that are a little stressed. The The crew that it was handling all the deck work, uh, moving ropes around, helping the, uh, raise the sail and all that, they're shorthanded now. They're down. They're down. Ath, well, Ath is helping, but they're down Mia, and they're down two other people who happen to be traitors. So they're hurting a little bit. She'll definitely try and like lift spirits, just kind of be cheerful and offer like the little flowers and stuff. Okay. Uh, it you see that it's definitely have an effect, and the the promise of a vacation seems to have lifted a lot of spirits up, and you you're just inching it up that much more, making it help deal because this is definitely a stressful type of situation right now they are you see people are running back and forth there's leaks that are happening in the ship that they are trying to repair on the fly um the ship is pretty damaged I, i'll try and go see if i can help with the leaks either crafting some vines or whatever okay. to help like block it off and you do see Graylin is doing that exact same thing mm. oh, it's always nice to have someone else who knows a little bit of nature Happy to help. Oh, yes, this 
freaking sorry I have to get his name real quick freaking Balin and his hooks they damaged the place rather well did you get hurt at all? no I, I was left on the ship And about this time, it's it's lunchtime now. You guys make your way over to the galley. You see that Helvog is there, but is breathing a little heavy now because he has expended all of his spell slots. But people are... Meow. Meowgy does not go to lunchtime. Okay. People are in sort of good moods. You hear some uh, sea shanties being sung about the wonders of the resort. Never-ending cups of ale. And you hear one person say, We have to do right by Molly. We need to drink that place under. Hi. (coughs) Here. here. Miyagi, what are you doing? I'm sorry. Miyagi. Go ahead. We'll go with Alex. Sorry. No. Alexon is just kind of drinking in the atmosphere, enjoying that everybody's like happier. Like she's just it's such a contrast from what she had to deal with in the temple. So she's Absolutely. just absorbing it all. And Miyagi. What are you doing? Mi- Miyagi's gonna stay in his and watch surroundings very, very carefully. Okay. Um, listening to what do you do with the eel that's still alive? It's gonna kill it. Okay. Easily done. And I, I need you to roll... said... Oh, sorry. Well, first off, uh, I need you to roll a perception check at disadvantage. And disadvantage? Mia... Yes, and Elkson, you're asking if you notice that Miyagi's not there? Absolutely. Finish my food and head over. And Helvog, you do get... Uh, an extra turkey leg. Oh, yay. 18. 18. I need to roll something. Didn't think you would do that good. Have to give you a chance. A bit of my food to bring. Okay, you don't see anything. Okay. Don't forget, DM, you have a divine Twitch mention. Oh, that is true. Do you all want to use it now? <laughs> I'm gonna give Do you, me- Miyagi? I want to know who's in the fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to... You, do you want to use it? Yeah. And normally I would not give you the choice, but this one it was held on for a while. So, all right. You see footprints on. Well, actually, the eel that was on the ground that you killed, it still had some water left over on the floor. And in the floor, you see small footprints walking away, leaving a trail of water. To the door, to a corner of the room. To a corner of the room. As okay. in, there's somebody stepping there immediately, like right now. You see those footprints appear. I'm just checking spells for <laughs> Elkson, it is at this moment that you have completed your food and you realize that Miyagi is not there. I'll start heading back to our uh, room then. Alrighty. Seeing oh. that I know someone's in the corner. Third level sleep. Okay. That's terrible. 
29. Wait, wait, no, why are you doing that? I, I just want to help. As you see a form start to appear, it is a red being with leathery wings, a long tail that ends in a stinger, a demonic looking face. Expense once just wants to help the wizard. Please, please, I just want to help. You need familiar. I I can be your familiar. As a player, I'm like. <laughs> as a player, I'm like. Oh. The, the 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 leads no longer need me. I, this is a big place, very big place. I I be good familiar. I get things for you. I I got you food. You like mice, right? Your cat. <laughs> Please let me know when Alex comes in. <laughs> I, I will. I'm going to point towards where the cafeteria is. I'm just going to be like, one second, point towards the cafeteria, cast message, target Lichtenstein. Be like, you should probably come here. You're close enough to say it. You do hear the message spell. You hear um, Miyagi. So you should probably come here. Oh, Joy, what'd you get yourself into? And I head off towards the room. Okay. It's at this moment that Elkson walks in. <laughs> oh, you're an, you're the nice the, the nice lady, the nice dragonborn. So you followed us. Oh, he not only followed us. I have a fucking friend. He's been leaving me food. Oh. Yes, I I'm well, a good friend. Nice? I'm a good familiar. Oh, you're going to be his familiar? Please. Please. I even have this. And he holds up a scroll. Let me see that. He hands you the scroll. It's the find familiar spell. I need a minute to process this as a player. I have this. <laughs> he has a little pouch. <laughs> I have this for you, powerful wizard. It's the incense and everything you would need for the fine familiar spell. Aw, he's calling you powerful. Alex is like all on board with this idea. <laughs> and at that moment, when you see Miyagi take, taking this pouch is when Helvog walks in. You see what is definitely an imp. Handing a pouch to Miyagi. Oh, no one, no person. He, he raises he won't up his hand. You. Oh, I'm gonna, he's I'm very gonna raise my yet. hand. I'm going to raise my hand. We do that because we saved him in the first place. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> as I walk in, I see said imp. Hand goes to the bandolier of darts on my chest. No. Oh. And no. I look at it for a second and shake my head. <sighs> Great. What's his imp doing here? I, I mix it. Miyagi's familiar. I, I mix it. I, I am familiar. I hope. Lich did not, did not want me. Okay, here, and Miyagi's going to sit down. Tell me about the lich, and then I will decide whether or not you're my familiar. Does that make, is that a fair deal? L lich was not always lich. Lich was, when he was wizard, I was his familiar. But when he became all skeleton, he, uh, he got really mean. Really mean. Well, you know, they do that. You've already been a familiar. Yes, yes. I was a good familiar. But he didn't want me anymore. Xmit's a good familiar. Xmit can be good. Is that lich still there right now? 
I don't know. He left a while ago. Did he mention where he was going? No, he would only hurt Xbit. And laugh at Xbit when I bled. Hey. He said he liked my screams. That's so mean. He was very mean. She's going to like give him a little pat on the head. What do I know about imps as familiars? Roll an arcana check. And I'm letting as you do a, this because you have Artificer, because as a cleric, you don't know much about familiars. But as an Artificer, you would not touch a little bit on the arcane. Eleven. Um, they are not normally the familiars of, of people who can cast Find Familiar unless you enter into a pack with one. Um, but it is possible. What's usually their bent? They're bent as in... Yeah, good, evil... Oh, evil, they're definitely evil. <laughs> chaotic. Lawful. Lawful, okay. What do you want from me? Hold safety? Inside check. Roll it. So it's kind of like having a pet. I'm not even going to bother rolling it. I'm going to give myself my 19 and let me check my... You seem to remember that this imp was left for untold number of years, trapped, and went insane. <clears throat> Your guess is as good as any if he's telling the truth because he might be a little bit broken. But he seems to be very genuine and scared. He keeps on looking up and is twitchy. He's, it's like he got used to the small confined spaces. Like He's on the ground walking. He's not even using his wings. I'd like the rest of you to stand back. And Miyagi will use the scroll to find familiar. You have an imp familiar now. <laughs> as a player, as a player, I'm like, ooh, an imp sounds cool. But as, like, I'm also like, ooh, it could fuck me over. I'm this sure this will have so no, fun. no negative consequences whatsoever. Making deals with demons. <laughs> 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 Right. I will send you all of his stats. He has stats? Yes, he has stats. <laughs> oh, yes. That will take an hour to cast. Yeah. Yep. I'm I'm going to look out, you know, I'm now going to keep an eye on him out <laughs> the corner of my eye for a while. <laughs> Xbit will finally fly up to your shoulder. I can go invisible too if you'd like. No one sees me. And we'll poof. Will be this for one. the best. Just so we don't have to answer too many questions. And on a side note, out of character, detect magic does not detect see invisibility. Or does not see invisibility. You need see invisibility for that. Yeah, no, I, I know. I just, I wasn't sure, like, as a player, I wasn't sure if somebody was, like, bamfing in the room, bamfing out. And so I figured, like, as a player, like, if there was anything magical, I could at least gather the, like... No, I completely understand. And at that point, this is a good stopping point for this session. Because I want to move forward with our uh, Suzanne coming back, and possibly we're going to have another new player join us. So we're going to end our sessions how we end all of our sessions with bitches, gripes, complaints, comments, questions answered. We're going to start with our new player, No Bumpus or um, Moose. Not No Bumpus here. You're No Bumpus in yeah, chat, yeah, which is why. Yeah. Nope. Everything golden. This this is great. I'm going to fit in with, great with these guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I can definitely see um, 
Liechtenstein and Miyagi being great friends. And next we'll have Damien the DM. It, it was definitely a fun session. Elkson is going to be thinking a lot about her friend now and kind of worrying if she's safe or not. She's going to be a little bit homesick, but she's also happy that pretty much all of her friends are safe. Um, even if some did have to leave, they're at least safe as far as she knows. So she's going to be writing it all down in letters and stuff and... Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to like getting to actually try the bow yep. next time we get into combat and seeing how well the naive Elkson fits in with this place that we're going to. <laughs> this is actually, well, we'll see if you guys get there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a bunch of other things that could happen, you know? I've got, uh -huh, I got sure. those random tables to do, so. And last but getting... oh no, go ahead. I'm saying you ain't getting anything by me, Mister. Oh, there's <laughs> seven people. <laughs> hey, it worked on one group. And last but not least, we have our new, new defender of demons, Miyagi. <laughs> just, just because I have him as my familiar, does not mean I have to summon. Second of all, well, you don't summon him; he's there. I can dismiss him if I get the fine familiar. See, spell. The, yeah, that's the thing; you can't really dismiss him. That that would be different if you that was the base familiars. We'll talk. He's there. <laughs> I thought I could. That was my whole plan. I did not go. No. <laughs> You cannot no, dismiss no, him. no, no, negative repercussions there. <laughs> no. None, not at all. No, oh, man. You, you just have a demon with you. <laughs> all right, so join us next time uh, when we have our next game, which is going to be on the nineteenth, where we will maybe see a nice relaxing session where everybody gets to be at a resort. I'm sure I have no plans. Oh What's joy, we're going to Risa. Nothing <laughs> nothing ever didn't not happen on, on Risa. The first, the first yeah. night we arrive, Miyagi has plans. Mm -hmm. Miyagi so, has plans and he is following through. So thank you for all the follows that we got and for the subscriptions that we got uh today. It was a very nice session, I believe. We got a lot of role playing in. We have a lot more. Every character had a little moment, which is good. Uh, so we will see you all in two weeks. Bye. Oh, before that, we need to find somebody to raid. Let's see. We are going to raid another D&D group. I have to, I have to type them out correctly and then it will actually work oh good game everyone that was fun put a lot a lot of rp in nice. yeah nah, i love that username bay fiends and friends yep all right And we are off. Oh. Oh. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all yeah, I after to... all the crap you gave Elkson <laughs> for freeing it, it's your familiar now. <laughs> it's... You made a damn deal with it. I, in my head, in my head, and <laughs> this is my, as the player, this is like, oh, it's my familiar, I can dismiss it. It will just, like, go off and do its own thing. But fuck. fuck. Hey, picture's great. I love it. <laughs> Good deal. I, I thought you I like would. So, yes, you have an imp familiar, and that was only because you got the... 
divine twitch mentioned that you saw him because he rolled a 23 on his uh, stealth. You're welcome for that. Yep, because <laughs> that was the long game. Oh, kind of an interesting setup. Now, was yeah. it just me that he was targeting? Or? He was targeting you simply because Zen seemed to be more of a warrior that doing the blade song because he was watching you the entire time. You were always the caster. So that's why they went for you. And and he thought, oh, it's a cat. I can please the cat by bringing him mice. And gain, then he didn't <laughs> like the mice, so I'm going to bring him fish. I, like, I was thinking in my head, oh, God, there's somebody in this room. I'm g-. Like, my whole plan was if this continued and I didn't get that Twitch mention, like, I was going to flat out, like, stay up all night and... <laughs> Pretend to be asleep just to see what would happen. <laughs> like I'll get, I'll suffer a level of exhaustion. I don't care. <laughs> like, oh man. But yeah, I wanted to get that interaction with Elkson and the Dryad. Um, honestly, the Druid Craft was the key. If you did not Druid Craft, she was going to fight you. She was going to. She, she thought that you were. An illusion. You were a play on her, which the Lich actually did do to trying to gain power from them. And uh, mm-hmm. it was that druid craft that actually you are of nature. That, that's like Alexon's go-to for everything lately. Oh, you got a whole druid craft some vine. Shove them in there. <laughs> Someone wants needs their spirits lifted, have a flower. Need to gain someone's trust, have a flower. <laughs> And Helvog will get will definitely get more into the party when you guys actually get into combat. He is more of the actual worker of the partnership between him and Reginald, I would say. I just realized I have turned Elkson into Eris from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oops. Oh now now I figured out who else is into that mix of the Winchesters and Van Helsing. He's a witcher. Yep. Uh, um. So yeah, it is. This should be. Oh, they in this stream they have a Echo Knight. So there you go. Um. Yeah. This I, I wanted to have Joey back for the next session. Uh. So that's why I kind of oh. ended a little bit early, even though tonight I could have went later because I don't have to work tomorrow. But. Oh. Labor Day weekend. Well, also, I'm on vacation. I don't go back to work till Wednesday. Oh, yeah. I go back to work Wednesday, but then I also have a date Wednesday night, so we'll see how that goes. Nice. nice. I'm yeah. looking forward to game on Tuesday. Oh, same here. Yeah. Y'all are getting to a massive part, and I'm like, I'm chomping at the bit. I've been telling Crystal all day about it, like, planning things. Like, I can't, I can't wait to use Echo Night for the first time. I can't wait to our next level up because then I get my pack. That's not going to be for a while. I hope I you know. realize. I know, but you're that's when. A massive battle, you're going to kill everyone off on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I always said that um, Kalmorn is a doomed character, and I know that, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Sometimes it's fun to play a doomed character because I know Theres Dune is pissed. <laughs> is pissed. Um. So for next session, we will have, there will be some combat next session. I would like for you all to try to use the stuff in Foundry, um, if you can, as opposed to uh, rolling, just because then we can use the graphics and it'll make things go a little bit quicker. I'm going to try to play around with it on my next Sunday to make sure I'm getting everything to work. For some reason, I keep, you guys keep on getting encumbered. So we might, um, for equipment... I'm going to delete all of your equipment on Foundry. So keep your D&D updated. And I'm just, when I import your D&D stuff, I will not import your equipment. That way we, that's a workaround. Um, sure, use us as guinea pigs. Oh well, yeah, the high level campaign is guinea pig. Why not? <laughs> no, um, Bumpus, are you in the, um, the Foundry? I'm not in the foundry on Divine Heresy yet. Yeah, I'm okay. going to fix that right now. 
Okay, because I just threw the books in uh, in the chat. That way you could at least read through them because I figured you and Mythor would go through the books. But they're they're pretty cool. Like, I love reading some of the lore and some of the stuff that uh, Brian comes up with. I, still... I can tell Alexon that there's stuff about dragons in the book. She she would happily read it. Yeah, there is. There's a whole book. There on is. It. Well, she doesn't know that. She doesn't know anything about the books that Miyagi has. So yeah, you can definitely uh, mention that, and they Mythor will make a copy of them and give you the copy if you'd like. Okay. But he wants the original. Right, yeah. I'm... No, that makes sense. I'm going to add... should throw them up into the journal page. Oh, yes. Um, or the journal tab, I mean. Well, actually, um, they're actual items, too, that I created. Yeah. Um, let me... We, if we are done, I'm going to go. Yep, we are done. Um, configure permissions... Observer, you guys, if you look onto the items page, which is next to the actors page, you guys should see a folder of books and you should see them all in there. Yeah, I see them. Not to me. Oh, gotcha. Cool. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good Great night. session. Right. Session. So, um, oh, yes. So, Xpit. Is an imp. He has thirty hit points, but he basically has everything the same as an imp. Um, but he does have thirty hit points, uh, so he's a little bit beefier imp. So if you go on your D and D character sheet, which I am going to do right now for you, because I know how to do it. Uh, yeah, you still need to add me to. to oh no, you're. Character. Oh, I think I need to do. I know what I need. Um, turn to join screen. I need to, yeah, add you as a player. Um, oh shit, that's not how I do it. Configure players is what I need to do. All right, waiting for force to do that. Uh, manage inventory, no, extras, manage extras, add an extra, familiar, imp, customize, Okay, there's Xpit on your extras in D and D Beyond. I need to go here. Is that user setup? Turn a setup. <laughs> so I will also have an actor for him. That you can control. Oh, that's awesome. Where the fuck is this? I'm having trouble remembering. I'm going to find it, though, because now it's bothering me. Just give me like a minute, Moose, and I'll have it done. <laughs> not like I'm in that big of a rush. Yeah, but I am. I'm not really. But I want